Um, previously we've had a look at the Gaia hypothesis and we've also had a look at Rachel Carlson's Silent Spring. So we've seen about the uh, growth of uh, environmental understanding and environmentalism through literature. So in this section of work what we're going to have a look at is the importance of media um, in moulding people's ideas and creating people's ideas about environmentalism. I just do want to explain what the uh, word stewardship means here. So stewardship is the idea that the um, natural environment is actually there for human beings to use, um, for them to use for their needs, but also as well as using that environment, it's also important that um, people recognise that they actually don't own the environment and they need to look after it and preserve it uh, for the next generation. So that's the way uh, stewardship comes in. Now, um, we've already talked about the religious aspect of environmentalism and the concept of stewardship is in many religious texts. Um, it's in the Bible and it, it says two things um, in the Bible about the environment. It talks about using the environment, all the fish in the sea and the birds in the air. It's the duty of human beings uh, to use them. In the Bible, it says it's because it's a gift, uh, gift from God and it's a duty for human beings to use them. But also, it does go on to the idea of stewardship. Also, it's a duty to protect the environment um, because it's such a wonderful gift uh, for future generations. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the role of um, media, media in environmental stewardship. So we've already talked about um, the concept of environmentalism and when it first started out it was very much a fringe part of a society and quite often the word hippie is associated with the environmental movement. So in the 1960s hippies were um, an important part of uh, popular, popular culture, but they were marginalised in many aspects of society. So we're going to look at whaling and uh, Greenpeace. So uh, Greenpeace is one of those uh, environmental uh, charities, and the basis of Green, Greenpeace is to protect the environment. So we get the idea of stewardship protecting the environment uh, for future generations. So when you watch the video here about Greenpeace and the uh, voyage there to stop whaling against a Russian fleet, um, it's an example of um, how important direct action can be. In the video, it talks about the um, international the international community being completely um, incapable or unwilling to stop whaling, and so in the video you will see them taking direct action. So that's not writing a book about it, um, that's not so, get passively doing something, or it's not even just going on a march. march. This is direct action. Um, some people might refer to it as a, a social disobedience, but they're actually put it direct action in protecting the um, environment. The other thing here, and this is in the 1970s, um, it was before the internet was invented in the UK. You had two, three uh, TV stations. That was it. So you didn't have mass media in the same way that you, that you do. So um, Greenpeace were one of the first organisations to realise just how important media coverage was. So in the video you will see lots of cameras. You will see video cameras. You will see um, stills cameras. Greenpeace very quickly realised if they're going to take this action, they need media coverage. And this action was so successful in stopping the whaling ships from Russia for two things. People were taking direct action, but also it would be all over the international community if they carried on whaling, because pictures of dead whales floating in the water and video would be taken and that would be beamed into people's living rooms around the world. And also, if they were to uh, cause harm to Greenpeace, again, that would be a lot of publicity. So in the video, we will see that this direct action that they have taken, um, the media is very important. 
There's another thing that I would like to talk to you about, and this is the idea of whaling not just being for food or not just being for scientific research. It is bound up in the culture of several countries. And one of those countries where culturally um, whaling is very significant is uh, Japan. So it's not as simple as saying to countries like uh, Japan uh, or, or Russia um, to stop to ban whaling. It becomes really complicated when it's bound up with culture. So whaling or the concept of whaling or the right of whaling is bound up in a country's culture. So politicians in those countries can use things like that to gain popularity, to run a campaign against anti-whaling measures, run a campaign to allow, to insist that country has the right to capture whales. That is a good way for you to get lots of votes. Uh, the other thing we talked about here is that you will see the people in the Greenpeace video, increasingly you will see the presence of environmental scientists. So we're starting to get the idea now that as this becomes more and more mainstream, um, they're starting to change the way they represent themselves as an organisation moving away from that, dare I say, hippie type way, um, way of looking at things. Um, now respectable scientists that have their hair cut short and are reasonably smart. For you will see them featured in the video. So that is a very important thing in getting the message across to people and getting the community to, set, uh, to understand um, that they're not just troublemakers, they are actually highly qualified scientists that do know what they're talking about. It gives the environmental movement that air of respectability, which makes it a lot easier to reach out to ordinary people. So in the next quick video, we're going to have a look at the film The uh, Inconvenient uh, Truth, and we're also going to think about uh, Michael Moore's uh, Planet of the Humans, because that raises some quite interesting issues.